Uh, let's All go right. to Doug Douglas Holtz Ega, the former CBO director, of course. He, he's been through a, maybe a couple of shutdowns in his day. But, you know, this one is very problematic, Doug, and I don't know if the recipe is there to end it anytime soon. Um, it, it's hard to quantify, but a lot of people are worrying about it spreading its tentacles and it gets to, to loans and delayed IPOs and way beyond the 800,000 federal workers who are, who are impacted, to say nothing of all the government contractors. What do you think? Well, I think you've got that right. I mean, those direct impacts are typically very short in duration, and they're, they're relatively minor. What we're seeing now is something that has dragged on a lot longer than many people expected, and it's spreading out. You're getting the kinds of nuts and bolts of the economy you don't usually think about very much. Can the FAA certify Southwest to fly to Hawaii, for example? Hmm. No, because they're on furlough. And so it's starting to interfere with normal business decisions, and, and that kind of impact is going to get larger. I'd say right now we're at something like a half a percentage point of first quarter growth uh, in an economy that was slowing anyway, uh, and, it's, and it's going to get larger from that. The other thing I think I'd point out, Neil, is we, there are two big things coming up that I think the shutdown is important for. Um, you know, these bad politics make people wonder, what, what happens when we get to the debt limit? Are we going to be able to sort of get past that point without a big disruption? And what happens at the end of the year when we have another one of these fiscal cliff kind of scenarios with a snapback to the, to the caps that are really just hundreds of billions of dollars lower than they probably need to be. So I think the real impact of the politics here is on future decisions that might have to be negotiated. You know, obviously, Republicans have been pouncing on the notion that the shutdown will end up costing more than the cost of the wall that the president wanted. I think sometime next week. I, I might have the, the off by a day or two. What did you make of that argument? It is what it is, but what do you think? Uh, it's apples to oranges. I mean, you know, we've got a, a construction cost for border security that the president wants, and we've got some larger economic fallout uh, from, from the shutdown. Uh, I, I think what it tells you is that the politics here are sufficiently toxic that holding the economy hostage has been okay for both sides. And uh, quite frankly, I think that was an important moment over the weekend when the president offered to move slightly instead of just being about money, yes or no, it was, well, I'm willing to trade some things you want on the immigration front right. for some things that I want to get my funding. That's normally how these things ultimately get resolved. You broaden out the issues that are under consideration, and you find a way for both sides to get something. We'll, we'll see good, if that's what happens. Yeah, good luck on that front. I mean, we do know to that point <laughs> that the U.S. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell says the Senate will vote on the president's proposal and the government shutdown. And to your point, that was the one that included funding for DACA, the children of illegals right. here, and through no fault of their own, are kind of in this legal limbo, uh, as well as a guarantee of $5.6 billion for the wall that doesn't have to be a wall. It could be slats and seal. I, I don't know. Um, is that enough, you think? I mean, obviously, a Senate vote comes up. You need 60 votes yeah. for that, though, so you need a lot of the seven or eight Democratic votes. What you think he'd get that? I, I haven't seen seven or eight Democrats raising their hand. I don't know if you have. So it doesn't look like enough at the moment. What we don't know and can't know is what's going on behind the scenes. Has there been quietly a counteroffer from the Democrats saying, okay, that's not okay, but I, I, we, need, we could probably do it with X, Y, and Z. Uh, that's the kind of healthy negotiation that's been missing for a month. And if it's started up now, then that's good. All right. You mentioned Kevin Hassett a little bit earlier. I think you did. Um, uh, the, the economic advisor to the president who is still saying that this will all work out, that whatever you lose in the economy and the GDP it is made up for, Pretty much what you and I have chatted in the past, uh, like a hurricane, you know, the building afterwards and, and, the, sure. and people getting yeah. back to the job. He's still confident that when uh, the numbers are in for last year, we will have achieved 3% growth. Uh, uh, higher than most thought, uh, but right. it could slow from there. What do you think? I, I think that's exactly right. If you look at what we know about the fourth quarter, I think we come in fourth quarter of 2018, year over year at 3.1%. That, that's my number at the moment. Hmm. That's a fantastic year. And so I'm a bit puzzled by the, the extreme pessimism that says we're going into a recession. I just don't see that's in the cards. We will slow some from that 3.1% pace, and, and we'll slow more rapidly in the first quarter because of the shutdown. Um, the real issue for me is uh, confidence. We, we worry about CEO confidence and the, and the capital expenditure plans. And I worry about general consumer confidence dropping so sharply between December and January. The household sector has been the bulwark of this economy. You don't want to see it start to weaken. So there's some things that are worth keeping an eye on. You know, real quick, if you indulge me in remembering your friend and the guy you work for in the campaign and John McCain, 
Um, yeah. How would he have handled a shutdown, or would he have even countenanced it on either side? Uh, I think he would have done it only as a last resort. He felt quite strongly that we had an obligation to get past narrow differences of this type and serve the larger American public. Uh, this shutdown is not serving the larger American public. I think it's the last thing John McCain would have wanted to have yeah, happen. Yeah, I think on his he, he was. I remember him very vividly ripping Ted Cruz. So who knows? But I, was, I just wondered what your insight was on that. Yeah. He he would have been less than happy, and he was with, <laughs> with Mr. Cruz. Yes, I like that. Less than happy. He might frame that a different way. Um, <laughs> Douglas Holtzika, thank you very very much.